So now we're going to talk about how to use more than one sequence. And um, this is very important because you can get much more information from using more than one sequence. You can learn about evolution of proteins. You can actually learn, extract a lot of information about structure and other features. And you can also use this for pretty better 3D structures. However, uh, first we need to figure out how to obtain what we call a multiple sequence alignment. So, in theory, a multiple sequence alignment is actually quite easy to understand. It's basically the same idea as you have if you're aligning two sequences, but you just add additional sequences. So you have you have you can add basically a, a, a third line, and you're saying where do you have the gaps in the first and second lines? Where do you put the gaps in the in the in the additional line? However, it's actually to get you break some of the dynamic programming features. So you, you you suddenly get an exponentially growing, fast growing problem. So you get more and more sequences that are getting ha harder and harder to, uh, to, uh, uh, to calculate. So you need to use heuristic methods for anything more than a handful of sequences. So there are a number of methods. The old tricks ones used to be class W, that's not really up to date anymore, but they're K-align, T-Coff, and there's also something called Cyblast that we'll talk about today, which is not really a multiple sequence alignment method, it's just what we call a hierarchical alignment method. So first you have to figure out what was the best possible score, and of course it really depends on how, how you define an alignment. You can think about, uh, one position alignment and in this case you have uh, six sequences so you have six aligned so you have five paths or, or five we have one alignment and you have five other residues aligned to that one and you can think about the score you can take the score of uh, uh, the first alignment the first rest sequence to all the others that's what we call a star so you have, that's what you have in the uh, option b here you can actually do you can think about having more of like a tree so they have like you take the most similar ones, so you score you align A to B, and then you take the score of B, and uh, that you just take the score between B and C, and B and D, and then E and F. So you basically have some kind of evolutionary pattern, because you think it happens once. Or you can score all against all, so like in the star match, you have A, B, A, C, A, C, D, as and C here. So this, this you need to define what you're going to be using for to get the optimal alignment. And of course, normally I think you use the, the last option, because that's well, you don't know the hierarchy, hierarchy of the things. So the, the basic idea is somehow that you start with, uh, for most of these heuristic methods, is that you start with all sequences, and then you do pairwise alignments of these. So that's that's still feasible, because it's minus n squares. So as long as they do not too many sequences, you can do all pairwise alignments. Well, you can use whatever, whatever with what one algorithm you want to use. So that, then, you, then you start basically taking Okay, let's start to take the two most similar sequences. So in this case, it was the red and blue, because they're most similar. So you start aligning them, and then the second one most similar are the green and the uh, orange. No, per, per, pink, whatever it is. So you, you align the red and blue first one, and then you align the... And then you add the, the one outside that, the other was the yellow, because that was... So you have one alignment that. And at the same time, you align the pink and the green one, and then you, at the end you align all five, all, well not all five together, but you take the two uh, green pink one and align these without changing the internal alignment of these two to the um, three other alignments. So the trick here is actually that you, once your two sequences are aligned, they will not change the internal alignment. You can make a gap in both of them, but not only one of them. So this is almost, that means that actually the order of things that are aligned is important because like if you would start with something else, you might get a different order. So that's why it's important to start with things that are most similar and have a little fewer gap because that's that's the important. But but it also means that this is not a consistent way to do things because it's it's uh, and th that's why you cannot be guaranteed to get optimal alignment. But so class of, this is exactly what the method class of W is doing, which is an old method, but it was for a long, long time a state of the art method. So first it does all this clustering and makes a tree of it and it starts aligning the things together. And if you take the so basically what we need to do here is to align two alignments, to two pairs of sequences. Which is actually not as long as you 
uh, just decide how to deal with gaps and so on, it's not difficult because basically that's the same dynamic programming algorithm as we used before. So you just have to calculate the score for aligning two sequences to two other sequences or five sequences to one sequence, whatever. So basically you have to, but you do not going to introduce any gaps between them. So you have to deal with, of course, what happens here if you look at position four in the red green one where you have a gap or red orange one where you have a gap. And how do you score that? How do you score this gap aligned to the other one? So uh, this is the problem how to score the gaps because if you think about, this, think about this example here, so you have four sequences aligned and you want to align the fifth one. And you can see it's obvious that you want to uh, align the W here that is added, added in the fifth seconds to the region with gaps in the middle between position three and four. But if you think about it, if you align to sequence four, you introduce a new gap. In the other ones, you're just extending a gap. So do you add a gap opening cost or gap extension cost? So what class W does is it has, has a varying gap opening penalty. So like if they align something to a region with all many gaps already, the gap opening penalty gets, gets uh, lower. So it kind of tries to get all the gaps occur in the same place, which probably makes biological sense. Because otherwise you often end up with alignments that have a lot, 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 lot of gaps. So this is an ad hoc heuristic method that it does. It has a very, basically see how many gaps you have if you have readers and also how conserved the position are. So if the position is conserved, you have high gap open penalty, you don't have more gaps there, but it's lower, you have a, a lower gap open penalty.